Hello, and welcome to Circuits 101 Basics. Uh, we're going to be talking about charge and current, and uh, hopefully you gain a somewhat decent understanding of, uh, of how this all works. Um, I will do rather repetitive examples. Um, if that bothers you, I apologize, but for other folks that are struggling through their circuits class or um, from the material online, um, this may be actually very helpful. So, um, let's, uh, let's, let's dive right in and uh, see what we can do. So, the first thing we need to talk about is charge. Um, now, what is charge? Uh, you know, everyone hears the terms like, you know, politically charged and um, things like that all the time, and but very few people understand what that actually means in terms of chemistry and physics and electrical engineering. So let's talk about that. So let's let's start with the most simple example um, or the simple basis. And so let's say we have a let's say we have a helium atom, and our helium atom has our neutrons and our protons, and it has our little electrons that you know float around and do their happy electron thing while they circle around a proton. Or, sorry, or while they circle around the nucleus, which contains protons. So in our nucleus, we have two things. The first is a neutron, which has zero charge. So it's neutral. Neutron, neutral. Um, that should be fairly self-explanatory. Um, proton, pro, positive. Protons are positively charged positive, and our electrons are negatively charged. And uh, if you want to know why electrons are negative and protons are positive instead of the other way around, bay, uh, blame Benjamin Franklin um, who, who created um, the, uh, the thought that electrons should be negatively charged. Um, that's, that's Benji's fault. So anyways, the reason that these electrons don't decide to fly off and go play ski ball with their friends is because they are negatively charged and the nucleus as a whole is positively charged. It has protons and neutrons. It can only be positively charged. So the electron is always kind of attracted to the nucleus. It stays around whenever it can, you know, and it will circle and do its happy little electron cloud thing and not really go anywhere, right? Um, occasionally, if something were to come along and knock off this electron, you know, whether it is some sort of radiation or a voltage or something, let's say we get rid of this electron, what happens is, well, now we have one electron and we have two protons. Well, these don't equal. So what happens now, because that electron went flying, is we have a positively charged atom. Positively charged atom charged atom. Well, looking at the charges of, of single atoms is, is not particularly all that useful or interesting. Um, very rarely do you ever sit there with a microscope and look at an atom. Um, that's, that's a joke. You can't really look at an atom through a microscope. Um, so let's, let's look at a material. So a material is going to have lots of protons, it's going to have lots of electrons, and it's something that we can actually measure, something that we can observe. So let's say we have some material X. It's this magic material. And in this chunk of X that we have, we have, let's say, three protons. And we want to make X neutrally charged. So what we do is we go through and we give it three electrons. So in this case, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. And therefore, it is neutral. It is neutrally charged. Bum, bum. Okay. So let's do another quick example. Let's say we have our material X again. It's, you know, funky shaped cross section. And, uh, you know, again, it has three protons. And let's say that we only give it two electrons. Well, in this case, the number of protons is greater than the number of electrons, so it's negatively charged. Negatively. Oops, sorry. Losing my mind. It is positively charged. So, more protons equals more positive charges, less electrons equals less elect or negative charges, more plus, less minus equals plus, positive, positively charged. All right, one more obvious example, we're going to make a negatively charged substrate, material X, 
which is uh, oddly similar to um, that that chemical X that uh, created the Powerpuff Girls. Um, but again, let's see. We have three protons, and let's say we give it f ow, do five electrons. We're going crazy here. So in this case, we have more electrons than we do protons. So then this is negatively charged. Negatively charged. Bum bum. All right. So by now you should you should get it. Now, why is this important? Why do we care about the number of electrons and protons sitting inside of a material? Let's scroll up if it'll let me. My computer hates me, by the way. So, um, anyways, so let's say we have two materials here. Let's see, material X that made up the Powerpuff Girls. And uh, let's say over right here we have material Y. Why? Um, because I can. And let's say. Let's give them all the same number of protons. Let's say three protons each. But let's change the number of electrons. So let's make X positively charged. So let's give it uh, two electrons. So X right now is is positive. And uh, let's make Y negative. So let's give it uh, I don't know, let's let's give it four. So Y right now is negatively charged. Now if I were to take you know something conductive, you know a piece of copper wire, um, and connect these like this what's gonna happen is these electrons are creating a high negative charge and the lack of electrons over here are creating a low negative charge a positive charge and so this electron is gonna go I am sick of all this negativity and I I just wanna go somewhere more positive and so he's gonna go through this little wire and he's gonna pop out over here so we're an electron over here this guy is no longer in material Y and now you'll notice I have one, two, three electrons, one, two, three protons. So now this is neutral. And over here we have one, two, three electrons, one, two, three protons. So now this guy is neutral. Interesting. So what this tells us is that materials, materials want to be in as close to a neutral state as possible. Neutral state as possible. Now, why didn't I just write, you know, materials want to be in a neutral state? Of course we want to be in a neutral state, but why as close to, ne to a natural state as possible? Well, sometimes the things can't get into a neutral state. So, let's say we have two more materials. Let's say this is material X, and uh, this is material lambda. I don't know why it's lambda, but it is. So let's say we have two protons here. And let's say we also have two protons here. And let's say we have one electron here. And let's say we have one, two, three, four, five... Yeah, say, let's say five electrons here. So now lambda is now really, really, really negatively charged, and X is, you know, kind of positively charged, right? And so if we connect a wire here, what's going to happen? Well, there are two things that could pop in your head. The first is that one electron goes through and makes X neutral, right? So right now, X is neutral. But our imbalance of, of, of our net charge is different here. So even though X is currently neutral, lambda, let's see, this guy went away, lambda is still really, really, really negative. You know, we have four, one, two, three, four electrons and only two protons. So because of this, lambda wants to get as close to a neutral state as it can. And X is still, you know, it could probably take a couple of extra electrons, so it's going to try to give electrons to X. So it's going to take, you know, let's say this little electron. This little electron is going to move in through the copper wire, and it's going to move over here, and he goes away. So now you have one, two, three electrons and two protons, and so now X becomes negatively charged. 
and lambda is still negatively charged but not as negatively charged so things kind of want to be in a balance you know you can think of this as like a uh, is a pressure you know if you take a balloon and you blow it up and you hold it to the end of a PVC pipe and then you take a balloon that is uh, you know deflated and you stick it on the other other end of the pipe and you allow air to flow through this balloon is going to deflate slightly and this balloon is going to inflate slightly they both have pressure but they have equalized their pressure so you're doing kind of a similar thing here as you, as, uh, you can think of um, all of these electric charges if you have like a lot of electrons or not as many uh, electrons you can think of those as pressures and so you want to equalize the pressures and get you know an equal distribution of electric charge okay so what we also did here is we explained very in very basic terms um, current so we had something that had a positive charge and we had something that had a negative charge and we moved electrons in between the two Choo -choo, like that and you know electrons are flowing um, you know flow current that's current so now in most cases that's not actually how current flows sort of kind of so let's say we have a a wire here right and let's say this wire is is made up of of atoms right and so let's say this is a very special wire and it is made up of hydrogen atoms and this wire is only one atom thick um, it's not really ever gonna happen um, but it's great for this example so in in each of these atoms you know we're going to have a proton an electron also a neutron but we're not gonna draw that proton and electron proton and electron proton and an electron proton and an electron and let's say we uh, we have an extra electron over here and by using a voltage source, which we'll talk about in a different video, we take this electron and we cram it in this atom. So now we have two electrons in here. So this guy went inside. And so we have now a net negative charge. And this atom does not like that one bit. So he's going to try to get rid of an electron and you know, go back to a neutral charge. And so he's going to take this electron and he's going to stuff it into here. You know, well, you know, we have a similar thing here. So we're going to take this guy and we're going to put him in here. Oh, and similar thing, put him in here. Oh, similar thing, put him in here. And so you've got these electrons that jump in between atoms. And so even though the atoms stay exactly where they are, you know, this atom didn't move, this atom didn't move, so on, the electrons jumped in between them. And so this is how electrons flow through a wire or a circuit or your car or if you're struck by lightning, you... Um, you've got electrons that move from atom to atom to atom. Now, how do we measure this? You know, how do how do we measure current? You know, what? How do we do that? So, let's say we have our wire here, which I'm going to draw more cleanly, and we draw a dotted line down it, and we have our electrons that are jumping, and they're moving. You know, this way. And they continue to move this way. If I were to sit here um, with a very tiny tiny um, pointer and uh, point the number or and count the number of electrons that move past this dotted line uh, I in one second I would get my amperage kind of so the way I say kind of is because there's a conversion um, so we get doot 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 you know these are flowing and I count these for one second it's gonna give me something of my current so now I said kind of why doesn't the number of electrons translate into current? So that's because we have some fun little uh, some fun little things we haven't talked about yet. So we measured charge in coulombs. Coulombs. This is how you spell coulomb, and one coulomb is equal to the sum of all the charges. Charges in 6.24 times 10 to the 18 electrons. Got it? Okay, so this number isn't wholly important. Um, one little side blip that I want to mention here is that you can't have half an electron. You can't have a quarter of an electron. You can have, you know, one electron, two electron, three electron, 40 billion electrons. 
that's all you got. You can't have fractions of electrons. So what this tells us is that um, coulombs are discrete. Oops. If I spell it correctly, I'm not an English major. One coulomb, or sorry, coulombs are discrete. Coulombs are discrete. So at some point in time, you can't have less than a certain number of coulombs. So for example, I can't have points 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Let's see, can you do that? Yeah, 19. This does not exist. You cannot have this number of coulombs because this would imply that you have a fraction of an electron does not happen never happens don't think it's going to happen okay so that's really the only reason that this number is important is just to tell you that coulombs are discrete uh, if you ever get into like semiconductor physics um, or things where you're dealing with uh, well mostly just just semiconductor very small tiny things where you're dealing with you know handfuls of electrons at a time that's really the only time where you know the, knowing that coulombs are discrete is important um, but uh, general knowledge of this is kind of a requisite to be an electrical engineer or a uh, a good a good student in your ECE course. So now, if I have, let's talk about amps. So current is measured in amps, also known as amperes. Amperes, amps, amps. So current, amperes, amps. So one amp is equal to 6.24 times 10 to the 18 you know charges so I'm sure right that is an electron moving past one point in one second so again you know you have your wire you have your electrons moving through and you measure you know with a dotted line and you count the number of electrons moving through if you have 6.24 times 10 to the 18 electrons moving past this dotted line in one second you have one amp. Gotcha. So if you notice, this number right here is the same as the number that which, which we use to describe a coulomb. So we can also define one amp is equal to one coulomb of charge per, moving past a single point per second. Ta-da! So lots of stuff, but things hopefully... Oh no, don't do that, sorry. Um, <laughs> so hopefully now you kind of have a general grasp for what current is and a general grasp of what charge is and how the two relate. So just a quick review here. So charge, so charge, assuming if something is electrically charged positively or negatively is an imbalance, imbalance to the number of electrons and protons. Okay, so this, we call this maybe net charge. And a coulomb, a coulomb is the charge equivalent to 6.24 times 10 to the 18 electrons. And an amp, one amp, is equal to one coulomb of charge moving past one point in one second. And last little bit is that materials materials want to be neutral or as close to neutral as they can possibly be. So there you go. Now you understand charge and currents, and uh, hopefully that helps you with your homework or your general understanding of things um, and happiness. Uh, yeah, have a good day.